never heard of Mark Holmes. I have no idea who Mark Holmes is. Okay? <laughs> I mean, that's right. Xander just said it. Do you think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? Find the way. Here and so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humper thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my dad. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, there is some bad weather on the East Coast, some bad thunderstorms that are rolling through, uh, hail, wind, uh, tornado possibilities, and all that. Mailman, game time Brian is out there. Neither rain, sleet, or snow will stop him from delivering the mails, getting soaking wet, and bringing you the news on the Cowboys. Shout out to all of the mailmen and mail ladies out there. I appreciate what you all do. So yesterday I got punked by, you know, Dan Salio, who it's kind of funny because Eagle fans that are actually fans of the channel came through and said they're not really fans of Dan Salio, that he's not really an Eagle personality or eagle fan or whatever and he's just this individual who's just angry he's just angry and maybe because he played at tampa bay back in the days maybe that's what it is that with the cream sickle and stuff so be that as it may um people think that i'm mad about him going deep in on me you know my daughter who started she was one of the early ones starting with youtube I would see comments, this is before I got, I mean, this is maybe 15 years ago. I would see comments, some that would be like, oh, they're really, really nice and this, that, and the other about what you're doing. And then there were other ones that were just like, oh my God, it's like my, my poor baby. What, what, they, they, she said, dad, listen, it doesn't matter if they like you or hate you. They all count the same. The more people interact with you, the more YouTube is going to share your content. So I actually have to say thanks, Dan Salia, for who is Mark Holmes, son of John Holmes. I guess, you know, it could be worse people that you could be compared to, if you know what I mean. You know, I mean, you, you wouldn't want to be needle dick, needle dick. I'm just, just saying, okay? But be that as it may, I ain't mad at it. I was fine. No problem. Um, he just is the typical angry ass Eagle fan. And the thing that's funny to me is Eagle fans should seem to be happy. You know, they were in the Super Bowl two seasons ago. They won their first Super Bowl in 2017. They, they've got a GM who's out there doing all kinds of moves and things, trying to make the team better and a winner and stuff. And here we are. We're the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, we're, yeah, we ain't done shit, as he put it, for 30 years. Why are you even wasting your time on somebody in a team that is so wretched? Uh, seriously, I, I don't understand. But, hey, you do you, bro. You do you. Um, so people want to know how come I didn't go down in the gutter with them and stuff. It's, uh, well, you know, it's kind of like when you look at Philly, think about it this way. You go to Philly to get a cheese steak, right? A cheese steak. Not a steak and cheese where you have more steak than cheese. You got a rubbery ass sub roll with you hope that it's actually steak. I don't know. It might be horse meat for all we know. And then that cheese whiz on. They don't even put any lettuce and tomatoes or some onions or maybe some Swiss cheese and mushrooms and, you know, some peppers, you know, maybe some jalapeno peppers. So you have some spice on it. No, 
They got a rubbery ass cheesesteak. Now you go to Dallas, you go to Texas, you know, you get like that 75 ounce steak. You know, you, you, you eating good in Texas. So Dan Salio, Trash Mouth, Mark Holmes, go high. Steak and cheese, prime rib steak. That's the way I look at it. All right, so here we are, now that we've been talking about the Eagles and all of the things that they have done. Um, over the course of the last four years, I'm going I'm to give you a little bit of hope this year, okay? Actually, I tell you what, let's do this. Let's talk about Mike McCarthy being fired. Right, the penalties were a problem. 14 flags thrown on the Cowboys is the most in a playoff game since 1940. It cost them nearly an entire football field's worth of field position. So, plenty of finger pointing going around. Let's talk to our NFL insider, Jason Lockenfora, who joins us now. As I mentioned, a lot of finger pointing going on, especially from the Dallas fan base after that loss, and most of those fingers pointing at Mike McCarthy. Could a change be made here? And if so, is the future of that team already on the Dallas staff? Jerry Jones didn't want to go there yesterday, but I can tell you this, Jerry Jones most years thinks his team's much better than it actually is. And this year, people close to him, talking to him through November, December, even when the offense went through its slump, he thought he had a Super Bowl team. They didn't come anywhere close to the Super Bowl, and lack of discipline, Game management, clock management were all major factors in that game. They've been major factors through a lot of Mike McCarthy's tenure. So, um, yes, I expect Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and his inner core to talk over the next 24 hours about how we got here, why we fell short, and who is to blame, and what can be fixed, and what are we okay living with, and what aren't we. And Jerry's looking around, and 25% of the league is looking for a new head coach right now, and there's a feeding frenzy, and, and his two coordinators are right in the middle of it. And each are going to have three to four interviews this week, assuming they take everything that's available to them, and he's going to lose Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is going to be an NFL head coach. I strongly expect it to be in Denver, but regardless, he's going to have probably multiple teams offer him the job if he goes through his entire hiring uh, interview cycle. And Kellen Moore, who, I, I, look, I think the Kellen Moore hype is out of control, but part of the reason the hype's out of control is because Jerry Jones has viewed him as a head coach in waiting for quite some time and looks at him as a critical part of that organization. And when Mike McCarthy got there, he was told, hey, part of you taking this job is Kellen Moore's going to run your offense. And now the Jags already interviewed him, and there's three other teams that want to talk to him this week. And regardless of whatever we may think of his performance this year in the second half and in that game, He's kind of seen as Jason Garrett to Jerry Jones, which might not sound like a compliment to you or I, but is because he once made Jason Garrett the highest paid coordinator in the game to keep him for another year to then eventually make him the head coach. So there's going to be a lot of internal. There you have it. Guys, that was the end of the 2021 season. That was, excuse me, that's 2022. So... When we hear Mike McCarthy's on the hot seat, we heard right there, Dan Quinn was gone. Dan Quinn, it might be the coach on the staff, that Mike McCarthy is going to be fired. Okay? Now, here's where it gets to be interesting. So, Jerry Jones, we, we failed against Kansas City. I mean, excuse me, we failed against the 49ers. And the Cowboys, of course, contemplated getting rid of everybody. And Dan Quinn was interviewing all over the place. They thought for sure he was gone then. And that Kellen Moore was the coach in waiting, Jason Garrett, .20. And what did the Dallas Cowboys do to change things? Everybody came back. And let me read a piece from ESPN about what the Cowboys did that offseason. The Cowboys have not made a major splash in free agency since Brandon Carr five years ago, $50 million in 2012. Five years, I'm sorry, five years, $50 million in 2022. I'm sorry, 2012. But they have shown the ability to make quality signings on one year deals. Last year, the Cowboys added safety J. Ron Curse, their leading tackler. 
Safety to Montre Kazee. Uh, defensive end Carlos Watkins. Linebacker Keon O'Neal. Whoa, dude. And punter Brian Aguilar on a one year contract. The Cowboys are drafted and developed team these days and use free agency to fill holes that give them a pure draft board come April. Here's a breakdown of every Dallas Cowboys signing in 22 and how each will impact the upcoming season. Michael Gallup. Gallup agreed to a five-year deal, $62 million to remain in Dallas. The deal, the, do, the, the, deal, the deal includes $10 million signing bonus. Okay, so you got rid of Amari Cooper. You got rid of Cedric Wilson. And you signed Michael Gallup. You brought back Jake McQuaid, your long snapper, to a one-year minimum salary deal. You redid Demarcus Lawrence deal to a three-year deal that had $30 million in guarantees. You agreed and signed a two-year deal with Malik Hooker. You brought in tight end Jeremy Sprinkle. <clears throat> you signed Dorrance Armstrong to a two-year deal for $13 million. You ended up signing a one-year deal with Leighton Van Der Esch, and you get made a big splash in free agency by signing James Washington, a unicorn who played, I think, three plays and had an incomplete pass. You brought in Dante Fowler from Atlanta. You signed J. Ron Kirst to a two-year deal. You uh, signed Brian Aguilar, our Pro Bowl puncher, to a three-year, $9 million deal. You agreed to a one-year deal on Carlos Watkins. That's it, people. That's it. You didn't do anything else. Nothing, nada, zero, zilch, zingo. Nothing. And we still were a 12 and 5 team. So we get it. We got all the noise. We've heard, of course, Dak Prescott is gone. You know, it's the last year of his deal. Understand, that's how the Cowboys do business. Remember when Mari Cooper. When he became a free agent before the Cowboys signed him to his deal, he actually went to Washington at the beginning of free agency, got an offer from them, came back to the Cowboys, and actually took a lower one. So it's not a surprise that they would go ahead and say, you know, Dak, <coughs> you know, we're going to wait on this deal. And on the flip side, since Dan Cilio, uh, Cilio uh, excuse me, Cilio, Maybe it's, I don't know, who knows what it is, okay? With this idea of the Cowboys would try and get Dak to waive his <clears throat> no-trade clause to go. He could, but I would think for Dak, this is what I tried to say yesterday with uh, responding to it. If you're Dak Prescott at this point in your career, you have been, um, offensive Rookie of the Year. You've been NFL Man of the Year. Um, you are closing in on almost all of the Cowboys passing records. You're only like 42 or 4,600 yards away from all-time yardage. And I think you're 42 TD passes away from uh, having the TD record. You've made $160 million on this contract. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, plus another uh, $35 million. So you've made, by the end of this year, $200 million. You've had more endorsements than probably anybody else. You probably have stock and sleep member. Uh, you're tied with uh, Jordan's brand on the shoes. And so on. The only thing right now, if you're Dak Prescott, you need to go ahead and solidify your place is a Super Bowl ring. And so if I have the option in one year from now to go to any team and situation that I want to go to and not harm the team by them having to trade for me, why would I just jump if New England called to say, hey, we want to trade for Dak Prescott to go to New England, a team that's clearly rebuilding with a rookie coach? That's going to have to give up draft capital, which is going to make it longer for me to build 
a team to win with. As opposed to, I'm a free agent. New Orleans, you know, Louisiana, where I'm from, wants me. Sean, Sean McVay, one of the best offensive minds out there, want, might want me to play with the Rams on a team that's ready to rock and roll. So that's where I look at it and say, no, why would I waive my no, no wave clause? I mean, my no trade clause. That'd be stupid. You play one more year in Dallas, you do everything you can to get the records. You either say, if you want to pay me, great. If not, and, and pay me and do more to try and win the Super Bowl. If not, I'll find somebody who can. And see, I think this is a misnomer when people, the, the crazy thing about yesterday, Dan Salio coming at me was, and I don't think he's got anything against me and stuff. I mean, this is YouTube, guys. People take this stuff too seriously. Is how everybody loves conflict and fights. They want to see somebody beat down, and I just don't understand that. So people are looking to say, oh, the Cowboys all going to re-sign Dak, like Dak's going to become you know, homeless and living on the streets. No. Take a look. Carson Wentz got picked up by Kansas City. He's been on, what, four different teams in the last four years? He's still getting a job. Jimmy G, who's going to be suspended the first couple of games of the season for um, substance abuse or performance enhancements, excuse me, um, don't know if that's related to the porn star or anything, um, he just got another job. Quarterbacks? There aren't very many of them out there, and there's a lot of jobs for them. Trust me, if Kirk Cousins, who's still rehabbing, from a ruptured uh, Achilles tendon gets $45 million, $180 million deal from Atlanta, that going to be okay. Now, I want to finish this off, of course, with the good old get-up, which is every day, every, every day, they talk about the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. Yes, the Eagles have done a bunch of tinkering. They were in the Super Bowl two years ago. Are they right now the biggest threat to San Francisco and the NFC? No, no, gee, surprisingly, I'm going with the Detroit Lions. Mm. I remember the first half of that game on the road that the Detroit Lions put together. And we all mm -hmm. walked away from that game saying, yeah, credit the 49ers, credit Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. But the Detroit Lions did everything they could to give the NFC Championship game away in that second half. I'm going to go with the Lions. Consistency, the Lions. returning their guys, and playing at a very high level. Okay, and then one more. Let's talk about your old one team, more, the Cowboys. I kept saying, well, once they do something, as soon as the Cowboys do something, we'll call Swagoo and we'll get him on to react to it. Well, we never had to call you, Swagoo, because the Cowboys haven't done anything since last we spoke. What is your reaction? Is this the last dance with Dak? What do we say about the Cowboys? Uh, we say nothing because nothing has happened, G. And I've been sitting here twiddling my thumbs thinking about, you know what? It's been a lot of off seasons where we talk about moves that's been made for the Dallas Cowboys, whether that be keeping their own guys or bringing guys in. All they've been doing this year is sending people away and doing absolutely nothing. I'm not going to shade Eric Kendrick's move. They needed a linebacker. Great. They got a linebacker, but they got <laughs> nobody else. OK. And the problem is, is that, you know, I can go off on a tangent and go off on a rant about this. But we heard all in. Everybody heard it. The whole world heard it because the whole world listens to what the Dallas Cowboys are doing. And ain't nothing been all in about this offseason outside of me riding past the <coughs> store and going to work out at Cowboy Fit up there mm -hmm. because I get a discount because I'm a former Cowboy. And I'm around <laughs> the facility. And I'm going to tell you what's happening around the facility, G. Nothing. Nothing's <laughs> happening up there. It ain't nothing but a bunch of people enjoying the star up there in Frisco. We eating at the restaurants. I'm going to visit my store in J. Hillburn to get my suits made so I can get ready for next season. I'm working out at Cowboy Fit. They got a 50-yard line field. All the kids are playing. It's a wonderful facility. The mm -hmm. Ford Center has been hosting high school athletes. They've been having camps. Yep. My son is training up there at the Sports Academy right next door to the star. And everybody around the facility of the Dallas Cowboys are doing something. But guess who ain't doing nothing? The Dallas Cowboys. I ain't seen no scouts. I ain't seen no GMs. I ain't seen no coaches. I haven't seen anything happen. 
I ain't seen a Brinks truck back up there for no free agent to sign. I ain't even seen Derrick Henry up there because Derrick Henry now is Baltimore. So nothing's going on. Guys, it's an all season. I don't know what we're going to do. There are no stories coming out outside of what they're going to do with Dak, and they probably going to extend Dak. I don't want to get into this, blow it all up. Quarterbacks ain't, walk, ain't growing no trees. He's still a real good one. So, right. Tim, how that's about it. your perspective at all? That's my tangent. That's my rant. There you go. Yeah, that's There's a good rant. I mean, a, go, Tim. Yeah. I, I don't I – don't, well, my perspective is I don't get a discount because that, that's the one <laughs> NFC team I was never on that roster. So, I would just say this. Like, look, I, I think that – I think that, that, is, that I, when I look at this situation at Dallas, look – Dak won this a while ago. When, when Dak was making 800 grand a year and the Cowboys, you know, were hesitant to pay him, but I think they were trying to use the fact that he hadn't made much money, you know, against him to sign an under market deal. He played chicken with Jerry Jones and he won. And because of that, he can continue to play well, get to the end of contracts. And so now they're in a bad spot because of the leverage that Dak has. And rightfully so from Dak's perspective. And so because of that, there's just certain things they can't do. Can't get involved in the Derrick Henry game or the A.J. Dillon game. Can't do that. Can't improve in some areas that Marcus is talking about in terms of in free agency. And so with that, look, this is the situation they're in. In some ways, guys, it reminds me a little bit like the Saints. When the Saints continued to play, uh, pay Drew Brees and kind of extend things out as he got older. Now, the good thing for New Orleans was Brees continued to play at a really high level. In order for them to have any type of success as they extend this uh, with, with Dak Prescott, because I think ultimately that's what they do, he needs to continue to play at a real, really high level or even play at a better level for them to have any success. Dan? Yeah, he played at a really high level all last year until the playoff game, right? So that's, that's what's missing is the playoff success. And that's something I don't think you can necessarily engineer in March with your moves. They need to be better uh, in the run game and better at stopping the run. And they haven't really made a ton of moves to help in those areas, but the offseason is not over yet. In terms of Dak Prescott, I do believe ultimately they extend him. I'm just not sure that's going to get done this offseason. We've talked about this on the show for the last couple weeks. Financially, against the salary cap, it actually makes more sense to do it next offseason. Obviously, that carries risk. Will he want to go somewhere else? Will he have a bad year? Will things fall apart? But right now, I think the Cowboys feel like it's it, it, Dak's going to be there, and they're going to get C.D. Lamb signed, and they're going to take care of the business they want to take care of. be the most important thing because if they're healthy, they're content. All right, we'll leave it right there. So, Cowboys, you know, we are expecting, of course, the Cowboys to do some things. It's not the Cowboys' way. They just don't do that. And um, as much as we want them to go out there and do things, the reality is, is they've actually been doing better than most. It's kind of crazy to think about it, but when you think about some of the teams – that have spent the most in free agency, like the Jets have spent more than anybody else over the last four years. The Commanders are always up there. Sorry. It ain't working for them. So there you have it, good people. This week we have the 30 uh, visits for the uh, prospects. That'll be key to watch that, to see who they're bringing in, because generally speaking, Guys they bring in are guys that they end up drafting. So we'll figure that out, and we'll definitely have more on that later on. As always, I appreciate you guys, and have a great day. Peace.